Uh, we will call the meeting to order at uh, the school building committee at 7.24 p.m. on September 12th, 2023. Uh, second order of business is citizen speak. Do we take a roll call? Do we need to take a roll call? That sounds usually right. Do we take a roll call? Do we, we call to order? Let's do a roll call vote then. <laughs> we'll start over here. Aqua? Yes. Scott? Scott Tershak, present. Tim? Tim Lombard, present. Selena Miranda, present. Mark Loring, present. And we are expecting Sean O'Rourke, our chair, uh, here momentarily. Uh, that brings us to the item number two. Which I is, will hold off on marking others present or not until we find out about the login situation. Great. Um, citizens speak. There's anybody uh, on the participant list who would like to speak uh, within citizens speak, please raise your hand and we'll promote you to a panelist to allow you to speak. There's nobody in person for our meeting here today. Steve, this really is just you. You're our only attendee. All right, the once, twice, sold. Moving on forward to item number three, approval of past meeting minutes for Monday, August 21st, 2023, which Sean sent out a few weeks ago. Any Edits, changes, or motions related to the meeting minutes. I did not attend, so I have to abstain. Same here. I will be abstaining. Having taken the minutes and editing them with the edits that I collected, I will vote in favor of them. Are you, are you going to make a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Uh, we will do a roll call vote then. Aqua? Uh, yes. Scott? Abstain. Tim? Yes. Uh, Linda? Abstain. And I will vote yes. So minutes are approved. And now we are still without Sean, and we are at item number four, which is his old business. Old business. Okay. We just call it when on the speaker phone. Okay. And it was like waiting for somebody to reply to him to give him the password. Oh, is he not able but, to get in at all? Oh, no, he well, and he was originally trying to start the meeting. It seems like somebody other than Sean. I see. Hey, it, we're in the meeting. We've started it. <laughs> you can't. What do you want to speak up for? Okay. Great. Uh, we already covered a few items. We did. Uh, we're through number four. No, there's no public. There was no citizen speak. We approved the minutes. So now it's just now we're into old business. So. Great. All right. He'll join the new promoter. He will call in and then I assume I can promote him. Yeah. There we go. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes. All right, perfect. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. The entire hotel's internet is down and crashed, so everything's just haywire right now. I apologize about all that. No worries. We uh, muddled through a couple things without you, but glad you're here. Yep. All right, cool. Who, who's with us? Just so I know. 
Uh, we have Aqua, Scott, uh, Dr. Mar Selena, Miranda, Tim, myself. Okay, Tim's not there. Tim is here. Yes, sorry. Okay. So Tim, Scott, Aqua, Selena, and Mark. Cool. Yes. All right. All right, perfect. So we're on to old business. Yes. Yes. All right, perfect. So we'll start with item uh, for a uh, discussion update: OPM request for services for Gal Road. So the the request for services got processed, advertised, and from talking to Nick, a number of OPMs have all uh, pulled the documentation. Um, so for for other members. Um, if you remember in the in the RFS, there's a, a mandatory site visit that's scheduled for tomorrow morning. Um, Mark and Tim are, are, are going to be there in my absence, mainly I'm out of state. Um, so, you know, for the site visit tomorrow, it's mainly there to uh, give the OPMs an overview of the site, uh, let them walk it, take a look at it. And then, uh, you know, essentially with that, you know, they, they'll develop some further questions. And uh, let me just pull up the uh, what I had on the schedule. I apologize, I can't share my screen, but I, I, the, if this goes off the schedule, I emailed out to everyone. Can pull up the schedule. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you have it, that'd be great, Mark. Uh, I think if you open it up, it'll zoom. Uh, it automatically updates to today. So we've got um, what we had for today's meeting, which is meeting number three, just based on that schedule. And then tomorrow is the information on site visits. And then essentially the following week on the 21st, um, any questions that they have are due. And then essentially we'll have uh, it looks like you know another week after those questions are received to respond to them formally. Um, so you know par partly what we're going to be looking for is you know development of that of the uh, the subcommittee uh, to start you know as those questions come in you know provide the responses and stuff to it or, or work through it. Uh, actually, the subcommittee probably won't be doing that. They'll probably just be doing the. Um, once once the proposals are all in, they'll they'll kind of go through um, all that stuff. So, just a, in regards to just the overall schedule for the next couple of weeks until our next meeting uh, on the 25th, um, and to see if anybody had any questions they could answer. What's the purpose of the visit tomorrow to the site? What what's the goal? It's mainly just for the OPMs that are submitting, so they become familiar with, you know, the overall site where the school is going to be, um, rather than just keeping them in the dark. Okay. Um, I guess, Sean, my only question on the for our next meeting is: Would we expect at that point to vote on kind of the the makeup of the subcommittee? Um, no, nope, that's tonight, item 5A. Oh, I'm sorry. Great. No problem. So, yeah, that's that's why I was just kind of touching on that. And, you know, when we get into new business uh, under that item, we can, we can jump into that discussion. So, essentially, you know, between now and our next meeting, it's mainly, you know, they would be, you know, doing the site visit tomorrow, submitting their questions on the 21st. And then we have our next meeting that, uh, the following Monday on the 25th. If all the committee members have the time, is, is it okay for them to be at the site meeting? I think we can. Yeah, the only thing. Yep, we can't have a quorum. What's the quorum? Aqua, if you want to attend, you're more than welcome to. Yes. I'll be walking from home tomorrow. I may be able to come out. No if, if, so if, yeah, yeah, if we end up with a quorum, it has to be officially a meeting of our committee. Five is a quorum. So maybe you both are going to be there. 
mapping that wouldn't make it a quantum. No. Okay. Nope. Did not. Nope. So yeah, to, Aqua, it's tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Sure. And essentially, every, everyone's going to be parking on the uh, Blue Hills Parkway, where kind of where everybody parked on the previous site visits. Yes. Um, the um, essentially, it starts at 10 a.m., but you probably want to get there around 9:30 just to uh, assemble with you know Tim, Mark, and uh, Nick Milano. Okay. No further questions from me. Okay, cool. Sorry, without the video, it's hard to judge where people stand. So if you guys don't have anything else, just just let me know and I'll move on. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, cool. Um, so the next one is, is just one that I'm keeping on there again, just so we can start uh, discussing it a little bit more, you know, each time because you know, right now our focus is on the OPM, but we also got to uh, start coming up with ideas on what we want to do for architectural services for the requests for that. And then, you know, figure ways of, I think, framing that one of how we scope it for what we're asking them to do. Um, it, it, that's going to take some work, um, you know, mainly probably on timing, you know, OPM, our goal or our schedule right now tells us we have an OPM on board by uh, November. And then, you know, following along with that, uh, we'll probably, you know, have a similar RFS that goes out, you know, in another month or two at the latest. So that kind of lines them up with, you know, our selection for them probably December to January, early January is, is my hope. Um, but you know, now that we've got the 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 request for services for the OPM going, and we're going to have my thoughts are we're going to have a separate you know four member subcommittee working on that. The other four that are kind of left over, um, we can start looking at the RFS stuff for the um, the architecture one, and then maybe we just flip the the subcommittee so one one group does the OPM, the other one does the architectural, and then it, that's all up for discussion or whatever. You know, you guys as a committee prefer, but I'm just trying to uh, go over what's kind of bumbles around in my head sometimes when I'm thinking about these things. Yeah, Sean, I think that makes sense, um, potentially splitting it up that way. Certainly, the, the ability to kind of move forward on the architect RFS while we're still running a parallel track we're trying to secure the OPM is is what I'm strongly in favor of that. And, you know like that that's what you're you're trying to set up here to reduce the amount of time here that we're kind of in limbo uh just waiting for architect responses. So our okay, committee architect should be on the architect selection subcommittee. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good one too. And and again, it doesn't have to be, you know, because they were on the OPM one, they can't be on the other one. But it's just more of I, I don't want people to feel excluded that if they don't go on the OPM one, that you know that that's just how it is. I, I, my idea when I said it was like the framework or what I wanted to do, it's just more of the process by which we go about selecting, you know, professional services and stuff through this. So, any yeah. other questions, or comments, feel free. Well, I think it makes sense, and uh, I'm glad to know that we're, you know, making progress already with the OPM um, and following, say, uh, Mark, a similar track for the architectural services will hopefully put us in a good place by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tim likes it, so once the OPM comes on, he won't have to do minutes anymore, which is good. Correct. So, yeah. All right. Uh, did that cover everybody for item 4B? Yep. Yes. All right. On to the fun one. Item 4C, update on discussion update on the land swap. So good news is uh, we've had contact back from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, uh, town councils, working with them um, on that kind of uh, 
update, we have the draft legislation for the land swap uh, in hand. Um, uh, uh, the town council, uh, Peter Mello, who's replaced Kevin Freitag, has drafted uh, special language uh, or legislation that has all the language of the land swap in there. Um, so what we're trying to do now is work with the EA, have them uh, review it before we submit it formally for uh, the special legislation. So um, the other one that we're doing too is the other day in the, um, similar to what we did for RFS for um, an OPM, we also did an RFS or a request for I don't know if it's proposals or whatever the term was, uh, but for appraisals. Um, so we've got that out there now too. So the the couple things for the land swap that we have to get into them are one appraisals and two uh, the alternative analysis that we have there, along with like certified votes and stuff that we already have. Um, so the good thing is on on the on the kind of process work that we've talked about for uh, the state to approve the land swap. Um, it, it's in motion now, so that's taking a lot of traction too over the, over the at least the past like two weeks. I, I asked this last time and got an answer, but let me check again. Do we have any legal action against the land swap? Nope. The, yeah, no, no, nobody's filed anything legally against us. Um, Sean, at the last meeting, we discussed the possibility of reviewing the language that's being submitted to the legislature. Is that something we want to do separately? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I can grab that. I know we're at, I, I'll forward that draft around after this meeting. Sorry, I don't have, I don't have questions on that on agenda C. Sean, the, the alternatives analysis? Yeah, What's so that? that one is, yep, that one's still in my court. I have just the final paragraph of um, the public land that we looked at of, of basically wrapping that up and that's been lingering for me. So um, I, I'll probably have some free time on my flight back. So that's, I'll try to get it, I, I'll, I, I'll get it done this week. Um, you, you may have discussed this last time, but in terms of the filing of the legislation, um, so how long before that gets actually reviewed and approved? So what's the process there at the time? Yeah, could you say that again? I'm sorry, it was, it was hard to hear. Yeah, just wondering in terms of the filing of the legislation, so how long would it be for uh, actual review and approval? Um, for my understanding, and I've, I've never done this before, is that once it gets filed, it gets submitted into a committee uh, with the legislature that reviews it, and that's where I think EEA weighs in on, you know, have they reviewed it, you know, not that they approve it one way or the other, but, you know, uh, I, I think that they call it an approval, but it's not an approval, it's just that, you know, they give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And then, you know, from there, there's a bulk of these that get uh, put up to the um, to the house and, and they they pass it. So, you know, our hope is, you know, we're trying to get this done for December and basically get it filed as soon as possible. You know, that's why we're pushing EEA to get in touch with them, have a meeting, sit down and review it. Uh, and then at the same time, follow along with the appraisals afterwards and then basically have all the check marks with them. And then that, you know, the similar, another parallel path of uh, once they've had a chance to initially review it, submit it uh, uh, through um, uh, into the house. I think that's the term. Great, thanks, Sean. Yep, no problem. Anything else or any other questions or, you know, if anybody else have, has any updates or anything, you know, just wondering if Aqua is hearing about any um, neighborhood uh, lawsuits coming our way or anything like that. Uh, I think you've already answered that. Um, just had from some context that there may be such a thing, but if you say it doesn't exist, then it doesn't. Mm -hmm.
we can move on. I don't see any other person here that has questions, so we could move to 4D. Yep, item 4D. So the, the project timeline, I know Mark, we were kind of referencing it before. Uh, if, <clears throat> if you go to the top of it or, or the very first uh, couple lines, what I tried to do is take um, the uh, EEA uh, submission and kind of update kind of where we're on on that. And like I said in the email when I when I shared this, um, the stuff that's listed, which is column C, or medium risk, high risk, on track, stuff like that, you can just ignore that. All that does is basically do the color coding or the formatting of the cells uh, off to the right. So none of that has anything to do with you know, with something listed as high risk, it's nothing I'm worried about or anything. It's just, uh, you know, I actually should just hide that when I send it out. Uh, but what I tried to do is update on there, kind of percentage-wise where we're at and a couple of the things that are on there. Um, you know, the, the, the big one for me is that we have that draft legislation um, and, and it's written, so it's just a matter of, you know, getting that filed. The other ones, as you kind of, scroll down and we go into the OPM onboarding, you know, for everything on there, we're on track. You know, the, the, we haven't missed anything uh, for any of this. Select board, when this was presented to them, they unanimously supported it and voted in favor. Um, so, so, you know, we're in good shape there. And, and again, that, that brings an OPM on board uh, by November. And then, you know, uh, once we start working a little bit more for the architect RFS. Uh, I'll populate this um, with the input from Nick to find out, um, you know, the same thing. There'll probably be a site visit. There'll be questions that come in afterwards. There'll be evaluations, you know, the whole process. And once we kind of get that scoped out as a timeline, um, I'll update this and just, you know, keep it on our records that, you know, it, lay it out with the meetings that we have scheduled for the end of the year. And if we had to add a meeting to, not align with that schedule, you know, I'll update people on that, but at this point, I don't have it. Any questions? Sean, I appreciate you sending this out. Um, it's very helpful. I, I do think for the EA submission to kind of the point Selena made, if we could potentially add some of that level of detail of when we, you know, assume that goes to the legislature and you know what the timeline is for a potential vote uh, determination on it. I think that'd be helpful. As again, we kind of look at the long term timeline, and then you know the thing it probably makes sense to determine this with the OPM. But obviously, like you know, what are the what are the things after the architect that we need to make sure are on our radar and getting done? Um, such as like what's the timeline for a um, conceptual design or schematic design, um, you know, those, those types of elements, um, you know, when, when do we anticipate we could probably it'd be a reasonable time frame to, to get that done that sets us up well for, um, kind of the rest of this, whatever school year before the, whatever next town meeting is, whatever we need for, I guess, for town meeting either in December or the one in April. Um. Yeah, and that's 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 some of the work. Like like I said, I think there's going to be a lot more work into the architectural RFS um, to you know scope out exactly you know within the budget that we have what our expectations are, what we can ask them to provide us as part of that scope, and then you know, look at that and kind of figure out a timeline for, you know, how long we think it would take for them. Ideally, it would be a short timeline to get this, you know, um, schematic design up and going um, quickly so we can get a price to it. Um, but yeah, those ones, you know, right now, you know, I, I don't know because part of it is it, we're going to have a contract with an OPM for a certain dollar amount. And then whatever is uh, left over from that, we have to look at that remainder amount that's there, figure out how much we want to spend on architectural and you know engineering services, and what what of those services do we want? Traffic, stormwater runoff, you know all the all the hot ticket items, all the hot button items that people touch on. 
see, see if we can do that with the money that we have allocated there. And then obviously we'd want to leave um, some funding so we're not, you know, totally out. And, and then lay that on a, on overlaid, you know, almost on a schedule from my guess would be January till July, assuming in May we'd ask for additional funding. Mm -hmm. So, and that's 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 the thing I've been trying to do with this project timeline to, you know, keep keep give us a look ahead on some of that stuff, and and then if anybody has you know things that I'm missing or stuff on there, you have commentary. You know, feel free to send them to me, and I'll try to update them as best they can. John, I have a question on the <clears throat> timeline graphic. Um, is this a document that's available for anybody, anybody from the public who's watching this meeting and wants to access it? Yeah, so I think I think probably what will happen is you know we've got a website now, so most of our documentation will go on there. So. I, I, for me, like I, I was doing this internally, but until I've got, you know, concrete stuff on some of the stuff and, and I'd want to edit it again, the stuff that's called high risk, medium risk, I'd get nervous putting that out to public that don't know anything. And they see that and they said, you know, get concerned that something's considered high risk and it's not. Again, it's just a color coding thing. Um, so, it, you know, probably the best because in our meeting minutes, Tim, too, we, we have to reference this document, you know, as part of the attachments or what gets displayed at meetings. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it would probably be good to kind of put this, not a live Excel file up on the uh, website, but try to update it maybe monthly and publish it up there. That yeah, works. yeah, but my specific reason for the question was related to the meeting minutes. Yeah, yeah, so anything... Any anything that's displayed at a meeting technically has to get listed at the end of it as like an attachment or something that was displayed. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any, any other questions? I think I know the answer to this, Sean, but just um, another piece within the timeline is just any communication with uh, MSBA. Uh, and I know I would say the last meeting or the one before where you shared the update um, that we heard from them, and which is good, decent news, but i um, not sure when we'll hear from them next, I guess. is my question, like, is there a, a general timeline that we we can have on here uh, or a placeholder as to like when, when we would anticipate if we were to continue to be pushing forward in the process with the MSBA that we think we would hear. Um, just looking on their website, generally the eligibility period being up to 270 days is what they say, which is a you know long, long timeline. So I, I don't know, I can't remember if in that meeting they gave you some sense of kind of next touch points or not. Um, so that is a timeline question, but that is also a question related to the next agenda item. Look at that and see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move the notes to the next agenda item, and that can be your question on that. Perfect. All right. If, yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. That's that's kind of you were reading my mind when I was putting this agenda together. I was like trying to lay those two together. So. Uh, I, I I had some a further conversation with a, a member of the MSBA, and they, uh, you know, my understanding is we should know. I'm thinking by December, whether we're accepted or not. Um, that uh, I was their their funding that they've been provided has been increased mainly due to the um, mm -hmm. the increased taxes that the states or the tax revenue that the states got. So they've increased from I think it's they were at 900 million before and now it's gone up to 1.2 billion so a pretty significant increase for them um so you know i think the next steps with msba they are going to be if if, if we're if we're if they're taking the next step with us and i'm just going off previously what they did so we had the initial call similar what they do after that is they have a site visit um, I haven't heard anything back, and I think Nick Milano is the point person for all this. Uh, but you know, I, I would say if we get a site visit from them, that's another well, tick 
or a check mark that you know they're 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 carrying us further. They're, they're not going to waste their time doing a site visit if they're not accepting us. So, um, but that's that's all yet to be yet to be seen. But my anticipation is over the next probably month um, we should hear from them and see if they want us to um, come out and actually see everything. So you would anticipate a site visit before the December timeline not being one for a site visit, but for kind of an overall potential acceptance conversation. Yeah. Sure? Yep. Yeah, an invitation. Okay. So they, they would accept the SOI and they would invite us to enter uh, their program. So no you know, if they if they're thinking about making a December decision for which schools are getting in and which schools are not getting in, um I, I think what you know, my, my guess is they would probably want to do their site visits sometime early October to early November, somewhere in that, that range. Uh, that would give them some time to really see everything and then, um, you know, weigh in to make their decision in December. If again, assuming December is the hard date that they're doing, there's really no guaranteed hard date that they have to meet, but that's basically what was related to me. It'd be on their website. That's traditionally when they have their board meeting to approve all the projects is in December. And they only do one cycle a year, ever? Yeah. Just once. Uh, MSB board meetings. So we have December 13th. Okay. Their last board of directors name. Okay, well maybe we can put that, you know, in in the timeline as a as a placeholder is that we, we should anticipate some final determination about this round and our eligibility by December thirteenth. What would hope for? Yes, days after yeah. that. Great. That's it for me. Same here. Move on to new business. Oh, new business. Right. We have no guaranteed right. hard date and that our discussion centered around typical and aspirational dates. So yes, move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, so you know, you know, basically tonight what what I was hoping to do, and so I listed the discussion slash possible vote, um, is basically creating our half of what I'm anticipating for the subcommittee uh, to select the OPM. So the the work consists of essentially um, uh, taking all the all, all the formal re responses that come in, so all the documentation, all the reference projects. Um, you know, the resumes, you know, the whole packets of all these things. And my, from hearing how many have pulled, I, I think tomorrow is going to be telling because tomorrow is a mandatory. So if they show up, you know, they're in, they can submit. If they don't show up, then it doesn't matter. Uh, they're disqualified. But I think depending on how many people show up tomorrow, my guess is it's probably going to be 12 to like 15 of them. Um, if they put together, if we get 12 and 15 packages, that's, you know, it, for me, it's a, it, it's a lot of work. So um, I just want to make sure people are okay with that. And essentially what you'd be doing is reviewing each one of these, uh, developing a scoring criteria based on the, 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 the grades or the, what was it, the numbers that are attributed for the different criteria for reviewing them. And then basically adding up all of your scores for, call it, 10 of them or not you'd add them up for all of them but you know say 10 submitted you'd add them up for all 10 and then we you know look at the rankings to figure out who are the best three out of everything and look at it that way so that's that's my ramble on you know the subcommittee thing I, you know before we talk about like who, who's interested in doing it and stuff like that um, I just want to see if there's any other general, you know, discussion or, or like requirements or, or questions that people have on it. We already know teams, groups, companies that we think may do better jobs than others from uh, for those who do this on a day-to-day -day basis for the LPM. 
I yeah. So I, I mean, there are definitely op some OPMs that I'm sure you know people in the construction industry are familiar with. Um, you know, part of that is if, if you have stuff like that, I think there's probably a um, I forget what it's called, but there's, there's essentially a, 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 a form that you have to fill out that you know even though you're aware of these people, you, you can keep yourself independent when you're reviewing this stuff because it's it's tough because the construction industry is so small that everybody kind of knows each other. Um, so, you know, I think I, I you know it's going to show them what they're submitting. So some of the some of the you know people that are out there, I, I've I've seen the see these on a third party, like when we do submittals for public agencies and stuff. Um, there are some people that just don't put a lot of time and effort into it and just basically copy and paste other things. And they have like misspellings, reference projects incorrect, you know, wrong client and stuff like that. It, it just, you could tell they didn't put a lot of effort into it. And that's basically what you, you know, do uh, as deciding factors as you're going through it along with you know the quality or how good some of these projects are you know most of the projects come with references so with the ability to call or contact the references say it's another school or principal or superintendent and you know get 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 a you know an idea of how they operated there too well, for the team members on the subcommittee that would be doing this would we have one general metric so let's say whatever the metrics is, everybody's scoring to that metric so that we can have uh, an average of all averages. Is what I'm saying making sense? Yeah, yeah I mean, it might be good. In Go ahead. Sorry, so I think that's like the criteria reference of like, you know, you have certain point values for different parts of the proposal. So like back experience working within K-12 construction, <laughs> What, what have they shown within a proposal that they've done jobs that are kind of comparable to this, uh, you know, the experience of the OPM themselves in terms of years of... So, so the way I understand that, that's yeah. like an attribute. So within that attribute, what's this, the range that we can score? Do we all agree to it so that I'm not, you know, I'm not scoring... Yeah, you could and say each that. one is a one to nine, and if there are criteria that we determine are more important than other criteria, we could weight those more. We can discuss... Yeah. I think that we could discuss that within the subcommittee to narrow it from 10 to 12 down to three and bring that back to the committee at large. Yeah, but like if each of these things have point ranges that we preset before looking at... Them. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. And then... Set. And point then there's to Tim's point, like discussion of like, you know, what is a seven for me versus an eight or a nine for you? Like that that's the place where it's a little more so art than and yeah, subjective. Yeah. You, want to, you want to have some conversation to kind of norm set around like what are what are the things we are finding important. I remember correctly in the yeah. July there was conversation that that assessment tool hadn't been Developed. So that's, I think that's why a tool yeah. that then creates this more standardized review process. Yeah. That's that's where I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... Aqua, that was one of one of the things, you know, for me, uh, I figured in the subcommittee, you know, this is part of the discussion they could work on. For example, like if, if something has 40 points associated with it, and you know, <laughs> put it this way, it's like if you write your name correctly on there, you're out of it, like you guys as a committee say, all right, we guarantee them they're getting 15 of the 40 points. And then what are those increments going up for different things? Um, but yeah, it, it, you want to make sure that, you know, if you feel somebody's not doing something good and you feel it should be a zero and somebody who is looking at it the same other way and looks at it is like, well, really, I, I see it as a 12. That's, that's, that, I think that's some of the discussions that would have to go on uh, within the subcommittee, you know, prior to like going through everything and just coming to an agreement on what you feel for, you know, even if you want to call it minimum to maximum scoring, you know what I mean? If, you, if, if, if everyone agrees, like I've had some, some people who've done these before, they, they agree that no one's ever getting a zero, but no one's ever getting a hundred either. And they, they try to get, develop a window that they operate in. Okay. But I, I get what you're saying, and even agreeing to score them in a percentage, so everybody knows you have the range of one to a hundred. Vis a vis, if Apple was scoring in a range of one to nine or one to ten, and you're scoring them to, I just think we need to have some 
guidance you know, would be group on so that it would make it a lot yeah. easier. I'm thinking even beyond the work itself, I'm thinking there may be a challenge in the future. Maybe it's what I'm doing now that's haunting me. Somebody may come back and audit it. We don't have an agreed scale from the beginning. It'll be difficult to say how we measured one thing better than the other. Yeah, no, we need a preset. We need, we need one and we will have a, should have a preset rubric to say again, like these are the criteria we are. And I think we actually, don't we actually already have yeah, we, that? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. so what happens is in the, R, in the RFS, there are, I think it's like three parts and each part is broken down into specific criteria of, you know, here, here's, here's what we're looking at and we'll review it. And this portion is worth eight points. This is worth 10 points and they all add up to a hundred. So, so the overall score is between zero and a hundred, right? And so on that sub part that you're looking at that, for example, is eight points. You would look at the criteria that it says there. For example, it might say project manager experience, and that's that gets eight points. You'd run through, look at the project manager, review their experience as it relates to school construction and stuff like that. And if they've done schools for 50 years and they do it in the back of their head, you want to give them a seven, fine. You know what I mean? But if it's somebody just coming out of the gates and has never done anything before, um, you know what I mean? It, it might it might cause you to do a lower score. And what that lower score is, I think, is where, you know, you guys as a committee would just basically come to an agreement on, on your individual feelings on it. And that, that's the reason it's a diverse, like, we've got four of us from school building committee, and we're going to have four people essentially from the town. And that's You've the reason we do it that question. way, too. So. Yeah. You've answered my question. Thank you. No problem. My notice, we will refer to RFS for rubric guidance. Good. Okay. Can I move to the, the proposed membership and voting for the members? Yeah, so, you know, for me, uh, you know, I, I'll kind of leave it up to people. I, I, I did talk to Glenn Hoffman because, um, what I was trying, my ideal makeup of the committee, and it's totally op open for discussion. I'm just, I threw it out there originally just for framework so that we could have an idea of how we might want to formulate it. But, you know, for the school building committee, you know, we're made up of select board appointees, school committee appointees, and then appointees by the moderator. And that's where I was originally, you know, my, my idea of the framework I was looking at was, you know, one member from the school committee, one member from the select board, and then two members of the appointees, which are um, myself, Aqua, Carrie, Scott, and Tim. And, and for me, I've got enough on my plate, so I'm happily, you know, bowing out of this one. Um, so, you know, if people are okay with like that type of framework, that might be a starting point, and then we figure it out from there. Yeah, I think that sounds good, and we've discussed that previously. In yeah. terms of like the the voting mechanism. Are we are are we doing this as like a nomination? Like I would say, hey, I nominate so and so, and they accept, and then we vote to accept that person individually. Or um, is there a, a proposed slate already? Um, or no, I, I mean, I, I, I'm fine with that if we want to do kind of just you know the individual votes for you know. I think the first thing, if we wanted to like keep it formal, is if we want to vote on that framework. And if people all agree on that framework, then do a vote for whoever from school committee, vote for whoever from select board, and then figure out the other two by a vote. I propose a motion to vote for that framework just described by Sean. Okay, I'll second. All no, right, Sean, I can direct the the um, voting, the roll call vote since uh, you you can. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Yep, I appreciate yeah. that. All right, so uh, in favor, Aqua? Yes, in favor. Scott? Yes. Tim? Yes, in favor. Lena? Yes, in favor. Uh, Sean? Yes. Uh, and Glenn, are you are you there? I'm yes, not. I arrived late. Hey, Glenn. Great, Glenn, are you in favor? Yes. Great. And uh, Mark in favor. So that is approved. Unanimous. All right. So, you know, for, for, 
start with school committee. Actually, an easy one. We'll start with select board. Um, so I, I know Mike was too busy for a lot of this. He, you know, with his work on the select board as chair, I don't think he would have the availability to do it. So hoping, Glenn, you're okay with it. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And I've done it, quite honestly, I've done it before. Prior okay. to the, in the old days, you didn't select the OPM first. You selected the architect, and then the architect helped select the OPM, and they reversed that at some point. So, yeah, I, don't, I can help out with that, definitely. Okay. Great. I make a motion Great. to nominate Glenn to the uh, subcommittee, the OPM selection subcommittee. I second it. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, Aqua? I vote yes. yes. Well, Glenn. Scott? Yes. Tim? Yes. Selena? Yes. I'm a yes. Sean? Yes. Glenn? Thanks. Yes. <laughs> school committee? All right. Yeah, school committee. So, Selena and I. Are, you and Selena. Uh, so, I, I'll. I nominate Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we have a second. 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 Oh, great. Me too. All right. Any discussion? All right. Roll call vote. Aqua. Um, I, you didn't finish the discussion. I wanted to. Oh, sorry. Discussion, please. Between two of you are here. We should hear debates. Uh, <laughs> yes, I. Agree. Yes, I agree. 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 Tim. Yes. Selena. Yes. I will abstain. Uh, Sean? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Motion passes. Great. So now we're in the two additional members from the, the general, the, um, let's call it town moderator appointment. Yep. I'll volunteer. You volunteer. Sure. I, I'll, I'll nominate um, Scott because you can just volunteer. I can always start a nominee. Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> but somebody else want to second? Second. Let's go one at a time. Okay, sure. Any discussion? Um, why did you nominate this? I'll wait for me. That's right. Aqua? Yes. Scott? Yes. Tim? Yes. Selena? Yes. I'm a yes. Sean? Yes. Glenn? Yes. All right. Can I nominate Aqua? How about Scott? No, okay. no, I'm already in. No, I'm trying to get to him. But yeah, do you want to be in on this thing? I'd be happy to. Great. Okay. I'll know? second Tim's nomination. Tim, did Aqua propose it then? Yes, I proposed okay. Tim. I second. All right. Any discussion? All right. Uh, roll call, Aqua. Yes. Scott. Yes. Tim. Epstein. Selena. Yes. I'm a yes. Sean. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Motion carries. So we have our makeup. All right. And very good. good. Sean, as you had mentioned, um, mm -hmm. as we move on to the architect selection, we may have to redo this again. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. So everybody has. We very that. likely will, and it is very likely to not be the same makeup, right? That's what I'm saying. So everybody would have a chance yep. to participate. Yep. Yep. So and and just. To, to to say it, to repeat to Aqua, so for this subcommittee, they're only going to shortlist three, and then those three OPMs that that subcommittee decides upon, call it ten submit, we shortlist it to three. Those three come back in front of the entire school building committee, all nine of us, and they they'll interview, and then the nine of us will get to select or recommend to the select board what our what our preference is out of those three so even though you know some people aren't working on the subcommittee to shortlist it everyone's going to have a say on the final opm so it's, it's not it's not a final decision by the by them they're just making a final decision or trimming it down filtering it down to three 
Thank you for the explanation. Yep, and, and then the same, we'll be probably doing the same thing now with the architect when we do it too. All right, we we done with five A. Yep. All right, and then so five B is you know just general discussion for a school building committee funding article. So, um, I I I know for us you know we're we're there's the town meeting the fall town meeting which is in December um, that I, I'm still trying to figure out you know should we go after additional funding then uh, for you know the services that we're going to be looking for the architect to do or um, you know wait and just go after it a, a higher amount in uh in may and the, <clears throat> the reason being is i mentioned it before <clears throat> excuse me um the 275 that we have allocated um you know up, up till that town meeting in december we probably we're really not spending much on a lot of this stuff um so you know in, in regards to that um <clears throat> i'm not sure if we would need to go for additional funding in, in, in this december uh, but it, again, I, I, that's just my read on it. But I do want to hear, you know, from all all, all of you too, just to, you know, to, you know, you know, so so that I'm I'm, pick, I'm picking up everything that you guys are, you know, um, looking at too. Don, if we don't go for additional funding, is there a chance that we could be running a deficit or slowing down our process? Nope. So. The, 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 well, the, the two parts, the deficit and slowing down our process. So deficit, we're not allowed to spend more than what we have uh, been awesome. allocated. So like it, as we negotiate the contracts with the OPM and then the following with the architect and stuff like that, none of it will exceed that 275 number that, that we had on there. Um, as far as slowing down the process, when I when I think this out again, if we look back at the schedule and we're onboarding an architect, you know, call it December, January, just say January first for simple things, um, they're going to have to spend money, you know, developing this conceptual design. And if we get funding in May, uh, approval that 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 goes into the uh, account, if you want to call it that, in the town for us, uh, July first or, or that that start of the fiscal year. So, and it's 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 work. You know, you know, we should you know start diving into a little bit, thinking of you know, do do we really think an architect for what we're asking them to do is going to spend whatever money we allocate them between um, faster uh, between January and and July? Like, would we run short? And if we think we're going to run short, then yes, we need to ask for more money. Um, and that's that's kind of my framework. When I'm thinking about December, should we ask for more money? I, I think we really need to look into it, you know, as a group and see, you know, what's our ask of that architect? What do we expect their burn rate to be for for you know the invoices and stuff like that? And then, you know, and that's going to inform us whether we have to do it in December or not. But I think, excuse me, sorry about that. I had a frog in my throat. Um, but I think by our next meeting on the 25th, we're probably going to need to know uh, pretty well um, because at, at some point we got to get in front of the warrant committee um, if we're going in, in December for additional funding. And I'm fine either way. If, if you guys feel we should go after more money, you let me what? know. We'll draft it. We'll get an article and we'll get going. But. I guess I am of the thinking that if we could hold off until May, when we'll know more, and then ask realistically for what we need, that that makes more sense than to possibly go in December and then find out that in order to keep whatever you know we need to do moving, that we would need additional funds. I don't think the town has appetite to hear from us twice. Um, so I would caution against going before the town meeting too early without enough information. Um, yeah, just just from the feel of it, you know, just the reaction we got last time. 
I, I, so, I support your idea. In addition to not having a poor appetite for multiple rounds of funding, yeah. I, I would recommend that by the time we go a second round, we have something to show. Yeah. We were given this much money. You haven't even spent X amount. You're asking for more. I, I think we have some things. The OPM have started work. Somebody's doing something. It will probably create a better appetite for them to listen to us. Sean, I just if we if we went forward and asked for tried to put an article ask for more money, the OPM contract and the architect contract, both of those we expect to actually have signed completed before the town meeting vote right and i mean at least the architect contract we yeah would, would we need both of those before both be signed before town meeting vote and if that's the case we can't sign a contract unless we have the money allocated anyways so does it really help us or would we have to go out to bid again if we got another no, I think yeah, so I mean, part, partly I think that, and that's where I was like for the OPM one, the way we framed it is um, th they're on board with us through this conceptual design. And then for that contract, Nick, the select board, and you know, members with us are going to have, once, once we select an OPM, we're going to have to negotiate a price for like, you know, here's the duration, here's the scope of work we need you to do you know, what is it going to cost and come to some agreement on what that price is. And then, yeah. you know, and I'll just, I'll just use round numbers just so we can break up the budget that's there. So we have 275, they might come in and say it's $50,000 for the next year. Fine. So now we have 225 that we have to operate with. The next one, when we go with the architect, we'll have to figure out how much out of that 225 we want to spend, whether we call it, you know, again, round numbers, 200 and we reserve 25,000 just for us for um, other things that might that come up. The, yeah, just, and then, so we, yep. Sorry, so I guess my question is from just a timeline perspective of is this even helpful is let's say we want to do 200 with the architect, right? And we, we sign that. Isn't that going to have to be signed and decided before the town meeting vote? And if that's the case, if then we get another $100,000 from town meeting, can we just amend that agreement to increase it to three hundred thousand, or do we need to go out and bid again? Like, I'm just, I'm just wondering if, if there's yeah. any way that actually yeah, helps no. procurement for OPM yeah. or architectural contract services. Yeah, yeah, both contracts essentially. When we, you know, long way down the line, when we get full funding, the anticipation is we're amending those contracts. So the OPM and architect that we're doing now. Even if the town were to, you know, give us all the money to build the, the project, we wouldn't. We're not going to go back out and select a new OPM or an architect because we've received new funding. So it's it's basically amending those contracts to keep them on board to keep them going. If that answers your question. Yeah, that does. So it, it would potentially be beneficial to if we had more funding that we could potentially allocate it to the architect in order to get more done if we felt like that was necessary. Um, yeah. Yeah. The way, the way I'm thinking about it is what's the latest we can submit to the warrant committee? Because we don't, I'd like to get the OPM bids in at least to evaluate where we think the costs are and compare that to the 275 and compare it to what we think we might need to spend on architecture. And, and maybe based on the OPM submit um, bids, we can. We'll have a certain level of knowledge and maybe we can draft something for the warrant committee and then maybe before town meeting we actually get rfp bids or um, architect bids in and then we can amend our article yeah accordingly based on what they're what the feedback they're giving us because ultimately from the two of them we want to be able to get to next may with the information we need to get approval from the town and if we discover yeah, we don't need anything yep. beyond that if we discover that we can live well within the two hundred seventy-five thousand dollar current al allocation through next May, then we can amend our submission to the warrant committee down to zero or any number, right? Because we don't need the content of the warrant. You need to just be on the docket for the warrant at that time. I think the optics of us amending it down would be really good. So we show up to town meeting 
our, our warrant submission has been amended down to zero dollars. We say we're going to live within our current allocation. Thank you. That, that's that's yeah, an no, so 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 if, if that's for example, if we if we uh, you guys were both Scott was reading my mind for what I was thinking of having the OPM inform us when they are onboarded of here's the money yeah. we got left. Here's what we're looking for them to do. What are your thoughts? Should we go for more? Um, and then, you know, for me, where you were talking, Tim, it was like, I agree, like, say we put an article in for X number of dollars, and we realize that we don't need it, we wouldn't go to zero and like advertise, we just pull the article out. So it wouldn't, it would never go in front of town meeting, similar to what we did for when we uh, took the land swap off in 2022. Yeah, just the, the timeline, though, in terms of to get in front of the Warren Committee, like in the final Warren have to be in front of them essentially November, like the very first week of November, November 3rd. Yeah, or that's, something. that's 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 right. right. Yeah, and, and yeah, that's why I'm actually out. appreciating this conversation. Yeah, cool. because I'm like, do we just put something on there to put it on there? And then as we get better informed, you know, so at least it's on their docket so they can have it as an item to look at. Um, and then if it turns out we don't need it, it's, you know, fine. John, when we ask for this money, we get very specific mm -hmm. things we are going to do for it. I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. We've given you 275. You haven't done any of the things you said you'll do. You just come back and you're asking for more money. That, to me, would fuel the opposition because they still exist. We, I would strongly recommend, let's have something to deliver, whatever that is. Let's go back and see when we asked for the money, what did we say we were going to do? There were some studies well, that we would do. We will have the OPM on board. OPM will just provide a lot yep. more expertise and knowledge from doing this in the past that we didn't necessarily have. Yeah, but let's show that there's some things that we can get some wins. I think I so think, we don't go there empty-handed. I think we'll be feeling our position. I agree not going there empty-handed. I think my 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 the thought though of getting something to put in front of the warrant committee is to buy time because again, right now we, we're not talking about the town meeting. We're not we're not necessarily committing whether or not we need to go in front of town meeting and ask for money. Right. I think by creating a warrant what it does is provide you the opportunity to like kick that decision down the road and buy yourself the opportunity to, because my concern is that we aren't going to have enough funds to actually move the needle at all uh, or move the needle enough when we get to May. And then we are, we're essentially wasting months, right. For a, a school that is desperately needed uh, and our kids are impacted in a way in which like, if we had just gotten an extra, $50,000, we could have gotten this architect to actually complete a schematic design that then we can present at the May meeting to say, here's this, like, here's some more, pro to your point, like, here's the progress we've been working towards. I don't know if additional funding is needed. I'm concerned about how tight this timeline is, because while the short list is early October, those are cost blind lists. Like, you don't start getting the cost until you do the negotiations, which is not till the end of October. So, like, we're not getting an OPM on board to help really inform this until the warrant is like really do it the last second. And I've never been through the warrant process, so I don't pretend to be an expert. So I guess that's where I feel like we will have enough information to yeah. go with an article in December. Um, and, and so I, I think like that one, I feel like we would have to have a very solid ask at that particular point, just given the opposition. I, I'm just very cognizant of that and thinking that, you know, there, there are not many months between sort of December, December and May that are a lot of this work with where they move. And so, but we have 275,000. That seems, and that's so naive. It sounds like it's, you know, a sufficient amount to still have some traction, be able to get some work done and go before the warrant then. I just don't feel like we're going to have enough information. So that's that's my my view. Yeah, it's two hundred seventy five thousand dollars as it relates to an architecture fees on an eighty million dollar building yeah. is no, it's not a lot. It's not not nothing. Yeah. It's yeah, nothing. It's not, not a lot. We go through projects where we burn through half a million in a month. In a yeah. Month. So like it yeah. it is yeah. very little amount of money, and so I 
I'm also aware of the fact that like asking for money twice, like I, I'm not saying we should ask for money. I'm I'm worried that we're not going to have an OPM, like I, to Sean and Scott's point, I would love to have the OPM weigh in on this and say like, hey, you really need an extra 125,000 in order to get you that. Why? Because Aqua, to your point, I think then we can bring the OPM to the Warren Committee, bring the OPM to town meeting and say like, hey, here's an expert. He's saying like this amount of money will get us X, Y, or Z by the time we get to the May town meeting, which is what we like our ultimate goal is we need this like little bit of extra to get us there. Like that, that would be the reason for to, my, to me to ask for the money. I just don't think we're going to have the time to get that from the OPM we select. And then, so now my thought is like, is there any other way of getting that expertise of just like reaching out to somebody and saying like, hey, can you consult with us on this? Just this, this amount to seventy five, we did apply thinking to. Yeah, and we I think we had two fifty initially, uh, if I remember the discussion well. And I said let's add some miscellaneous to it, and we threw a miscellaneous. Uh, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I think it makes sense if we're dealing with a rational private investment. The politics of this is even more than mm -hmm. the rationality. Mm -hmm. If we don't deliver anything on the first money that we provided, when we go out there, we'll create more position for us. Like maybe we just try and find out. Because it would yeah, just look yeah. like we came, we're given money, we're coming back to us for a moment. I guess I'm just and the narrative out there. Punt on that yet. The narrative out there is that the project may be twice what we think it is, what we're proposing, and this would just fit into it. Yeah, I guess again, I discuss. Well, I don't. Think, yeah. I don't think. We're, well, a we're not making a, a formal decision today, right? This discussion. I yeah, appreciate yeah. all. The, I appreciate yeah. the, the back and forth, but I think like the the idea of trying to get any type of warm thing together just tries to buy us slightly more time. To then again pull it and say, hey, we don't have enough detail in this. This isn't good enough. Um, obviously, like the Warren Committee is gonna have the ability to like be the first step of asking questions and getting some pushback and like a share in some of this thought. I don't even know if we want to come from the Warren Committee. I'm just trying to figure out 275. Yeah. It's very little. What it, what is the goal we're trying to do in order to get to April uh, or May and present to folks uh without without delay uh and without like spending 275 by february 15th on the architect and the architect's got 60 percent of schematic design and we're not able to get any money until may and so now we, we get a little bit more money in may to finish schematic design and then we're not getting the full money until the following may uh you know what although those timelines just stack up um and that, that's my guess. yeah i yeah, so if I could just kind of chime in, I apologize. It's hard being remote, no one to jump in. But for you know, to Mark's point, if you if you just and again round numbers, you call it a hundred million dollar project. The typical architect and OPM fees are ten to fifteen percent. So you're talking ten to fifteen million dollars just for them, right? Once this project goes, and and our goal is to make it go. Um, the 275 that was there, uh, I think we all knew was going to be a small number in the overall realm of what we have to do for fees for this thing. Um, my goal is, you know, once we get that architect on board, I, I, I want them to hit the gas and, and go as fast as possible. And I, I would prefer, you know, to Mark's point, that money not be an issue. So um, the, the point of, you know, worrying about opposition and worrying about, you know, you know, the concerns of those. Any of these funding articles when they go in front of town meeting would only need a majority vote. And my read on town meeting is we have more than a majority vote for the supporting the schools, understanding how much of a crisis it is. Um, so it, for, for me, you know, my only point is, you know, it, it, I wouldn't I wouldn't let the objects of op the opposition uh, worry us for making a decision for funding for the school so that's, that's just my take Scott, just one other thing again going against my own position here is like i thought we talked about this a couple months ago or something i was asking about this and there was i thought the sentiment was there's actually not a whole lot of money 
to be gained in the December town meeting anyways, because we're not, we're obviously not asking for an override, right? We're asking for some, I don't think we're asking for an override at least, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, we're just asking for more of town revenue, uh, potentially, I don't know, whatever, whatever money yeah, they found yeah. now in the end of the year to be kind of allocated towards us. It, so like, how much right. money are we even? It, it seems to me that the amount of money that we would be asking for in December is less than or equal to our current allocation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like, is uh, that, is that an impactful amount of money? Yeah. So if I, if I, so if I could, you know, let, let me, let me see if this works uh, for everyone too, is, um, it would be helpful to understand, you know, I can talk with Nick and, and Mike, Mike uh, Zulis to find out, are there other requests for funding going into December, for example? You know what I mean? And, and if we would be the only ones going in asking for funding, that might change the way this discussion is going. But if there yeah. are other committees or stuff like that asking for funding too, you know what I mean? I, I, I think our, our need is like paramount in the town. So um, that, that might be a way to kind of, you know, help us all. Um, and I, yeah, I'm open to keep talking and stuff like this. I actually enjoy this conversation. It's, it, it's good. It's good, you know, discussion points by everyone. I think this is good. Yeah, I think that might be good um, to at least have that sense of like, what is the amount we're even potentially talking about here? Because um, I do think there's up where your points are, are well made and that there's if it, we're talking about gaining ten thousand dollars in order to go in front of town meeting to ask for more money without really showing anything like i think at some point there's a trade out there of like is the amount of money we're asking for worth the potential negative ramifications because you know there are certainly negative ramifications of asking for money and so that that extra detail in my mind at least sean would be helpful um yeah my, my only other thought is i, I don't know if y'all know folks but i might personally just call some folks I know and say like, hey, here's kind of, here's our bucket of money that we're thinking and like our timeline, like what what do you think as it relates to like how much this- We we do, like is. we certainly yeah. do, and that can inform this discussion, Yeah. but us internally presenting that to the town is not, Sean wants an outside third party to lend us that credibility separated from our vested interest here we i know that scott and i deal with this i know that glenn and sean deal with this i know that you do many of us do we can give an informed opinion on this but that is still coming from with us in our committee i think sean i'm not trying to speak for you but i think that's what you're trying to avoid mm -hmm. uh, sean again i'm fully committed to whatever steps we choose to take but this same body this same group with the same intellectuals that we have, same experience, nothing has changed. We propose 250. We had all the same contacts to find out what the range would be. Are we saying that uh, internal intellects or intelligence was that off? No, no that's we're right. proposing 50%. No, 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 we just know more now and we're going to know more in a couple of more months. Right. So if, 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 we, if we take that thought, then how do we even know that an S275 would work? What if two more months the, the same thing happens? Can I my my thinking is let's deliver something. We've done, we've made a proposal, we have, let's deliver something, then we can go back and say we got new ideas, we have new things, and we ask for more. If we don't deliver anything, if I were making the call, I wouldn't even approve it for this. Group. I'm giving you some money. What have you done? We all run projects. If I'm running a project, I'm giving you that. No, it doesn't matter percentage to the job. I've given you what you asked for, and you don't come back to me as a director with something. I'm not giving you more money. You don't know how to estimate. You're going to break this thing. That's how I'm thinking. I wouldn't do it in my job. I won't give you more. You asked for this, exactly what you asked I gave you. You didn't come back with what you said you were going to come back with, not even 50% of it. And you're asking for more, I will get you off the project. So, I'm just being very frank here. Yeah, that's how I'm thinking. If I were managing this for a for-profit company, that's how I would decide. You know, you, your team, the same, nothing has changed. All of you are smart as you were. You asked for X, I gave you X. We're going to bring you Y. You didn't even bring half Y. You're coming back to ask for another X. 
Just sharing yeah, my thoughts. So, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I like it. It, it. You know, the, the rebuttal, to, you know, at least my rebuttal would be for that advice, you know, if I was coming to ask them for more money is, you know, what I, what I started with is like, you know, the overall project soft cost for architecture and engineers is going to be roughly $10 million. So we asked for 275, knowing it's going to be 10 million and we're going to need that additional money at some point. Um, you know what I mean? And, and at this point, and again, speaking <laughs> as if I'm standing in front of town meeting, you know, at this point we've on, onboarded a third party owner's project manager who's done these work. Here's what they, they think with the architect that we're planning to bring on board, how far we can get along with that funding over between January and July, which is where the 275, you know, could be spent. Um, and, and they see us coming up short. And, and again, to Tim's point, it's a third party doing it, um, you know, beyond us. I mean, we, that's part of it too, is like, the thing to keep in mind is, you know, we're all volunteers. It's, this is not a full-time dedicated job for all of us. And, you know, we're, we're doing our best for, you know, coming up with, you know, what we think we need to do this. But once we bring an OPM on board, they're the professional, they're the, you know, they, they're, they're our representative that's working 40 hours a week on this. And, and they're the, going to be the ones who inform us, which would be nice. So um, that, that would just, you know, for me, Aqua, that would kind of be my response if somebody you know, said that to me, which I'd be fine with. Thank you, Sean. I think we all know <laughs> our thoughts here. Yeah, we yeah, all, yeah. It's all good. We make progress. I know what you mean. You mean very well, so do my other colleagues here. But if I don't share that, then we may just be channel vision. My note, if you all want to agree with this, we will vote on it later. Goal is to onboard OPM and quickly make a determination if we can live within current funding allocation until May 2024 or if we will need to request additional funding in December 2023. Yeah, but to the original point of Sean, like, do we need to put something in front of Warren? We have to decide that before the OPM, right? If we, if we want to put even a draft in front of the Warren Committee to then pull later, have the ability to pull later, that's something, Sean, you're saying we, we kind of need to decide by next, we don't need to decide today, but we need to decide by next meeting, essentially, um, is that right? Okay. Yep. So, so I, I, I think a good thing for us is, you know, definitely with, you know, the, the differences that I'm hearing, which is, again, it, it, it's good. I, I actually appreciate, uh, you know, you know, discussion like this. Um, let me do a little more homework to find out, again, are there other funding ad, uh, articles that are out there? Have they confirmed what the free cash, which is you know the the funding that you're referencing, Mark? Uh, have they confirmed what that is and how much would be available if we wanted to go after it? Um, and you know, kind of just you know bring this back again. We're not voting on this tonight. It was purely discussion. Um, so you know, I, I can get all that, bring it back, and you know, we can you know strike this back up at any point. Yeah. All right. All good. All good. Yeah. All right. Toto's the end. All right. So item uh, six, future meeting dates. Um, so our next meeting. And I apologize. For this. The the the. I was trying to get the Monday one in. My daughter was in for a of surgery. Nothing bad. But my, my Thursday last week got hectic, and by 5.15, I forgot to email it to them, so I'll make sure to get it. Uh, I'm actually going to do it the Wednesday before that one. So Monday the 25th, and then two weeks later, or no, it's longer than that because of the holiday of Columbus Day, I believe. So our next one will be the 16th. And then the one that occurs the week after that, uh, if you look at the schedule, the reason it's a week after it is mainly because there's a vote needed by us to get it. Uh, I think it's on the OPM selection, so we need to basically have that meeting to pull a vote so that it can go to the select board the following night. So, um, you know, apologies on the kind of back-to-back -back meeting that week. Any questions, comments? Hearing none. So, nope. All right, cool. Item seven. Uh, so I'll entertain a uh, motion to adjourn if everyone's fine with it. So moved.
I, I'll second that. I think I've seconded many of the things. Great. I'll do the, the roll call vote. Uh, Aqua? Yes. Scott? Yes. Tim? Yes. Selena? Yes. Myself say yes. Sean? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Great. Motion passes. We are adjourned. All right. Th thank you, everybody. And again, apologies about the technical difficulties vote here. <laughs>